Okay, hi there. Um, I have two little tips for you today, and they are centered in the fun world of the Power Platform Admin Center. So uh, two very important ones, but very short. So uh, let me quickly share my screen and show you what I got for you today. All right, you should see my screen, right? Awesome, thank you. All right, Power Platform Admin Center. Uh, two things that I've noticed, um, and especially in the last couple of days, I've talked to many uh, people from the community who were um, who wanted to start building something with the uh, AI builder. And with the AI builder, you have different AI credits that you will need for every project. And it just so happens that I was talking with a good friend of mine and they were like, we built this new group uh, of, of IT professionals and people who really want to dive into the AI builder deeper. And we are starting with our project now. And then they suddenly realized all the AI credits were already used up. So they had none left, despite they having lots of um, uh, licenses and lots of credits in the first place. And then we realized why that was. So there is a new setting or kind of new setting in the Power Platform Admin Center. And if you go here on the left-hand side to the settings menu, all the way, almost all the way down, you see AI Builder Credits. And if you click on that, you will recognize this little tick, allow users to consume unassigned credits. And this is something very interesting. All the credits you get from all the licenses go in one big pool. And every user who just has access to the AI Builder can use those credits. And then it can happen that those credits get used up without you realizing that. So what I, from a governance perspective, usually recommend is just take that right back. So, and then you can assign AI builder credits to a certain environment if you like, or just give them out as people ask you, maybe by a service ticket or whatever the way they have to reach you. But in that way, you can be you can stay in control of your AI builder credits and you don't happen, it doesn't happen that you start this new exciting AI builder project and all your credits are gone for that month, which can be very frustrating. So once again, check that box. Per default, it's switched on. I as an administrator would say per default, you want to switch it off. That is the first tip from me. Um, Regarding AI builder credits, the second one is even more important. And I guess I will make another video of why that is important. But now we start with something that's here in the policies. Left-hand side, select policies and then come down to tenant isolation. This one, per default, once again, it's off. And tenant isolation is one of my favorite topics around Power Platform governance. Tenant isolation basically means if it's switched off, you can create inbound and outbound, outbound um, um, connections to and from your tenant. And that is, for example, needed if you use a third-party uh, connector for Power Platform. Especially, for example, Adobe Sign-In. Create a document, you put it in a flow, send it to Adobe Sign-In, get it signed, get it back. Then you create an outbound uh, connection while sending it to Adobe Sign, and you get an inbound selection by getting it back, which is great. The other part of it, and the not-so-great part, is that other services can create connections to your tenant without you realizing it because those connections are not getting detected by a DLP policy, for example. So it is easy, the easiest, the most, or one of the most important data leak potentials that you can fix right here. So you can switch on the tenant isolation here. And the good thing is if you switch it on, no tenant collections are allowed. No inbound, no outbound connections. But sometimes you need in and outbound connections. For example, if you work with a different, with a, with a customer or with a client or with some kind of third-party service that needs a connection to your tenant, or like Adobe Sign. Then you can create up here new tenant rules where you can select the direction, inbound, outbound, or both and then put in a tenant domain or an ID that is allowed or not allowed. These settings here work with wildcards, so wildcards, so little asterisks goes a long way. If you say inbound and outbound connections or wildcard, it would look like this. Then you have inbound and outbound connections, whatever the tenant ID is, that are allowed, despite you having on tenant connection. This is a really interesting thing and very important thing. So that's why I don't want to wrap it up in a two minute video or something. But I have a recommendation for you. And um, one of the community members who's not here with us today is the great Antipa Union from Finland. And he just wrote a blog post. 
about uh, in and outbound connections, which is really, really great. And they even included a few examples. He's working at a company, Forward Forever, really great. Um, they have an amazing blog series. And Power Platform Talent Isolation, examples of outbound and inbound connections is a very valuable blog. I will put it in the description as well so that you have the direct link and can click on that. So if you have no idea what talent isolation actually is, check out that blog, switch it on, and then be a little bit more safe and secure. Thanks.